Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Beacon 2021. So grateful you could join us today. And uh, it's really my privilege to help kick off uh, this event. Uh, the topic that we're going to kick things off with is data and analytics in the post-pandemic economy. Um, over the next 20 to 25 minutes or so, uh, I'm going to share stories of um, our customers, some really innovative companies out there, and um, what we observed last year and how they used data to successfully navigate through the unprecedented disruption uh, that we really all experienced last year. Um, as a way of introduction, uh, my name is uh, Pedro Arellano, and I run the outbound product management team for the for Looker here at Google Cloud. Um, and uh, you know, just as somebody who who started his career in, in the data and analytics industry, you know, many many years ago in, in the late '90s, uh, it's 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 incredibly exciting to see how data and analytics has evolved, and and just really see the things and, and the use cases that companies are doing with data today. Um, but let's rewind a little bit uh, and, uh, and go back to this month, one year ago, more specifically, March 3rd, 2020. Um, so that was the day that the Google Cloud's acquisition of Looker was finally done. And, and, and this was the day that the Looker team descended upon Google headquarters in Mountain View, California, to go through our onboarding process and officially become Googlers, right? So you can imagine, I'm sure, how excited uh, we all were to start this, this new chapter in our careers. Um, and um, and th that's a picture of my dog there, by the way. That's Coco uh, wearing my Noogler hat. Uh, she was obviously very excited, too. Now, uh, none of us could have imagined back then what was about to happen. Literally one week later, the week after that happened, Google instructed all employees to work from home. And things in the United States began to shut down like in, in many, many parts of the world. Now, it's been uh, over a year since that day. And obviously, we all know what's happened. It's, we're still coming to terms with just the devastation of the pandemic. Uh, there's, of course, most importantly, just the massive human toll, just millions of lives lost or, or altered profoundly uh, all over the world. Um, and, and there's, of course, the economic toll. We, we saw a dramatic rise in unemployment, hundreds of thousands of businesses that shut down. Um, here in the United States, you, know, you, you see estimates that vary between 160,000 to more than 300,000 that had to shut down uh, uh, last year. And, and according to certain economic impact reports, nearly 100,000 of, 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 of those did so permanently. So, um, and, and we even started 2021 with some pretty grim prospects. One research study estimating that as many as 10,000 retail stores could close this year. But uh, we've started to turn the corner. Uh, I think many of us can, can feel like, um, like things are changing for the better. Uh, economists are seeing encouraging data points very encouraging data points that suggest not only that things are, are, are picking up, but that we may even see a post-pandemic boom. So an era of, of lower unemployment, higher wages, and years of sustained uh, stronger growth. So um, take retail sales as one of those data points. Economists were expecting that they would see retail sales increase 1.2% in January. And they actually surged 5.3%, far higher than any of the experts predicted. Uh, and there are many signs like this. You know, new unemployment claims have declined. Uh, there was a surge in startup businesses. I'm actually gonna talk about one of those uh, in, when I get to the stories. And economists are now forecasting that uh, the economy will grow 6.8% this year, and that unemployment is going to drop to 4.1% by December. And just to put those figures into context, it took us eight years after the last recession here in the United States to get to those levels. So it's pretty remarkable uh, that we would see such a quick and strong recovery. Now, of course, even last year, uh, amid the, the disruption uh, that we were seeing, we did see certain sectors of the economy do well. Um, as you might expect, e-commerce thrived, uh, of course, because all of us were home and shopping from home. So online sales, just to give you some, some figures, um, during the holiday period, reached $201 billion in the United States. And in total, 
we spent $861 billion online in 2020. That is up 44% from 2019. Um, in 2019, online spending represented 15% of all retail sales. Last year, that number was up to 21%. So that means that more than one out of every $5 we spent last year was online. Digital advertising, another example. For the first time, you saw many, many companies spend more on digital ads than on TV, for example. Uh, and, and when the pandemic hit, they, you saw a lot of companies shifting uh, most, if not all, of their advertising revenue to digital. And as a result, they saw their sales increase anywhere between 300 to 500%. Now, of course, many of these companies' business models were already heavily based on digital, but not all of them. Uh, the pandemic really was a, a very real massive shock to the system, uh, and it required the ability to adapt extremely quickly. Uh, for, for many companies, what it did is it accelerated their, their journey or their migration to digital first experiences. So this here is a tweet from the CEO of Box from last April. Uh, who shared that he spoke to a number of CIOs at Fortune 500 companies and learned that their IT strategy was all of a sudden very different from the previous year. What does that mean? It means more cloud, more digital, more automation, and really years of acceleration compressed into a few months. So what we learned last year is that business as usual doesn't really exist anymore. Our, our industry has been talking about digital transformation for years. But now there, there really feels there's a, there's a very palpable sense of urgency behind it. And, and more than ever before, businesses are now challenged to accelerate their move to digital and adapt their business models to this new digital reality. A few more stats to share with you here. Uh, this is from a study that, that showed that 70% of CEOs say that the pandemic accelerated the creation of digital business models by months or, or even years. Um, in Europe, European firms who generally lag behind their U.S. counterparts when it comes to, uh, to digital say that more investment is needed because of the pandemic. And then, of course, the way we work is also changing. 96% of employees who are able to work remotely want to continue with some form of it, either full-time remote or some kind of hybrid model. So many things are changing. And, and now the question is, as data leaders and data professionals, how can you help your organization prepare for this new digital reality? Um, how can you make your organization more resilient to future shocks? So I'm going to share a, a number of stories that all have uh, a few things in common. They, they all use data as the starting point to deliver digital first experiences. And, and the digital investments that they had made uh, in, in cloud, in more modern uh, uh, data solutions and emerging technologies allowed them to react and adapt very quickly, allowed them to activate their business through uh, data-driven workflows, uh, and allowed them to augment their products and, and service offerings with new technologies. So, uh, so let's take a look at, at these examples. The first uh, set of stories is about the ability to adapt to unexpected circumstances. So how these uh, organizations use data not only to survive, but to deliver real value in the middle of the pandemic. Um, and uh, the first one is an organization called Commonwealth Care Alliance. They are a not-for-profit healthcare organization based in Massachusetts. They specialize in community-based healthcare for individuals that have very complex medical needs, including uh, people with disabilities. Uh, now, CCA had already been a customer of ours since 2019, so the year prior to the pandemic. And really, their goal was to uh, migrate to the cloud uh, and, and address some, some issues and problems around data bottlenecks and data chaos. Uh, but last year, uh, when the pandemic started, they were suddenly in a situation where they needed to understand which of their members were now at higher at highest risk. So you know, find out if a member had a, a positive COVID test. Uh, or who were the members that had the, the highest risk of bad outcomes if they became ill, uh, or the most vulnerable members who would need the, the greater attention. So, so all of a sudden, their goals shifted from, let's migrate to the cloud and manage our data better, to we need to understand who the people are that need our help the most. And how do we use data to identify those risks and, and in those locations so that we can react very quickly? 
Now, because of that investment in cloud the previous year, they were now working on a more modern data infrastructure, which allowed them to pivot very, very quickly and redirect their analytics efforts to those very urgent questions. It literally took them two hours of work to spin up a new monitoring dashboard for COVID that showed them all the members living in a county where there was a COVID outbreak, as well as their, their risk for a bad outcome. So they analyzed data about every patient who visited them in the last 90 days. They applied predictive analytics to determine who was at the, mo the most risk. And, and this data helped their care managers be a lot more effective so that, so that they could reach out with home care solutions and that way uh, prevent patients from having to, to come in for a visit if, if it were too risky. The next example is a company called Sound Commerce. Uh, Sound Commerce provides a data platform that helps uh, retail brands uh, with, with data models and metrics and insights. And these insights give Sound Commerce customers a path to shift things like ad spend and inventory uh, from brick and mortar to digital. So um, uh, last year during the pandemic, many of Sound Commerce's customers had to shut down, of course, as you know, uh, their, their brick and mortar store locations. Thanks to Sound Commerce, they were able to understand regional trends that helped them quickly transform the e-commerce portion of their business from the secondary uh, source of their revenue to their primary source of revenue. So now you have all these retailers that have all these store locations that weren't being used, right? So the question was, what if they could repurpose uh, those store locations as fulfillment centers for online orders? And the data gave them insights that allowed them to identify what are the optimal store locations for their inventory. And then they essentially converted those stores into fulfillment centers. And, and for their customers, it really sped up the purchase process because it made products available in a fraction of a time, closer to them, it reduced shipping time, it made curbside pickup faster, uh, it ensured that the right inventory was available for, for any exchanges, uh, and of course, it just improved the, the shopper experience. And all of this, of course, all this shift to digital happened so quickly in the middle of the pandemic. And then the last uh, example in this section is a company called Harbor. So Harbor is a software company that helps to digitize the hiring process. They use data, they use machine learning uh, to automate parts of the application process, the interview process. And, and initially their, their data and analytics process was very manual. They relied on very, very labor intensive statistical analysis, uh, but they got bigger, they, they got more customers and it became clear that they needed uh, to, to scale, uh, the, to, to have a more scalable process. So, so they built this product called Harbor Insights. And we have a number of customers that actually do that with data. They build their own products. Uh, and this product, Harbor Insights, has helped hiring teams re not only reduce the length of the process, but also handle 4X the inc uh, a, a 4X increase in applicant volumes. Uh, now, one of their customers is a virtual workforce company uh, that provides customer service reps. And during the pandemic, as you can imagine, they experienced a, an unprecedented influx of people coming to them looking for remote work opportunities. This digital automation process that Harbor already had in place from their Harbor Insights product allowed this customer to place 150 agents in just four days. And these people were able to support COVID-19 testing efforts uh, and, uh, and help thousands of Americans find remote work opportunities. So um, we just covered uh, some companies that figured out how to use data and modern cloud technologies to react to the pandemic very quickly uh, and deliver digital first experiences to the people that rely on them. And at the core of this was really the ability to use data to, uh, to power analytics and drive insights to help uh, make better decisions. But what if you could use data not just for analysis, but also to fuel uh, business processes? Well, these next stories are about that. So this first customer is a company called uh, FuturePlay. Uh, FuturePlay is a mobile gaming studio in Finland. Uh, they're the makers of games like Battlelands Royale, uh, Idol Farming Empire, uh, and every day over 1 million people play FuturePlay games. So as you can imagine, this company is extremely data-driven. They generate massive volumes of data every day. Um, and they use this data to understand everything about their games from, from high level metrics across all the games, but also deep dives on a, on a very, very specific feature in, in one game, for example. But what I want to talk about with this uh, here is they have a very innovative use case. Future Play built a real-time 
AI powered bid bot. So th this bid bot, what it does is it automatically adjusts the bids for their ads up or down on a number of digital advertising platforms, depending on the performance of each ad. So it's, 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 it's pretty interesting. The bot knows if it should increase or lower the amount of a bid. And essentially what they've done is they've automated their, uh, how they optimize ad spend, right? It's, it's an enormously valuable application. But what's really fascinating about it is that it, in this use case, at no point is there somebody sitting in front of a screen looking at data visualizations, right? They found a way to, to use data differently than, than just analyzing it. They've actually put it to work and, and, and uh, automatically trigger processes that help run their business in a very efficient way. Um, this next company is, is Go Spot Check, and it's a company that I'm going to mention three times throughout the presentation because they uh, they have some really innovative ways to use use data. Uh, now, Go Spot Check is a task management platform. It, they enable their, their platform enables teams and frontline workers to complete tasks on mobile devices, and then uh, generates insights or triggers actions in real time uh, based on what the the, the uh, the frontline workers are doing on the mobile app. So there's a lots, of, lots of applications for this uh, in operations, in merchandising, in, in training, quality assurance, facilities management, etc. This first story is about how they help companies optimize customer workflows by automating field processes uh, and by reducing or sometimes even eliminating manual intervention. So it's a national, a national furniture retailer uh, that uses the GoSpot Check uh, solution to track in-store repairs and maintenance requests. Um, and, uh, and then based on that information, they initiate data-driven workflows when certain criteria are met. So for example, upon identifying a need for a repair uh, or maintenance, district managers will take a photo of the issue and then submit it via the app and then the platform automatically triggers an email uh, via Looker to the company's repair and maintenance team. And then that triggers a ticket to their work order management system. All these different systems that are linked and automatically trigger like this little chain, it, it greatly improves the speed and, and the time to submit and complete a, a work order requests. And of course, this impacts uh, safety, it impacts customer, uh, customer satisfaction. And, and once again, it's all about using data not to analyze, but to take action. Um, one more go spot check story. So this next example is about a national grocery uh, merchandising brokers. So they rely on the GoSpot Check solution to help its merchandisers and field sale reps optimize product placement and product performance. So uh, what their solution does is it helps them track things like distribution and inventory, uh, merchandising, point of purchase programs uh, across thousands and thousands of grocery stores. And traditionally, this is a process uh, where brands have to invest tremendous amount of resources to influence retailers to stock and, and to feature specific products, right? And then the merchandising brokers need ways to measure the ROI of the promotions, the, the displays in the store, and the merchandising service. So what this particular broker did is that they uh, created an automated alert within the GoSpot Check solution that automatically notifies merchandisers when a particular item hasn't been scanned at checkout in, in a given time period. So, you know, hey, it's been a couple of days since this particular item was purchased, what's going on? So when this happens, uh, there's a brand representative that automatically re receives a notification to go check on the product in the store and also engage with that store's uh, location manager to come up with other things that can be done when the product is sold out. Like, you know, can we sell something else uh, when, when the product isn't available? Now, previously, this process is very complex, was all done very manually, but now it's all done automatically using these data-driven alerts and these data-driven workflows. And, and it's, it's this type of purpose-built data application that makes it so easier, in this particular case, very easy for the broker to identify trends, to identify opportunities in real time and ensure that the, uh, the retailers, the stores, are maintaining appropriate stock levels for, for its brands. So um, 
We've looked at organizations now that use data to generate insights uh, that help deliver better digital experiences. Uh, and then we looked at organizations that use uh, data to automate business processes. And in this last section, we're gonna look at companies that are using advanced technologies to, to support some really innovative use cases. So the first one is Cuventus. Cuventus offers a software platform for hospitals. Uh, their product uses artificial intelligence to help automate patient flow across everywhere in the hospital, emergency departments, pre-op areas, patient safety, inpatient, outpatient, pharmacy, uh, you name it. Uh, when the pandemic hit and, and hospitals saw, of course, a dramatic increase in hospitalizations, Cuventus tackled the problem of massive capacity pressures on health systems and, and the problem of increased demand to have the right PPE supplies at the right time. So they developed this uh, scenario planner for COVID-19 that used data science to predict the impact on specific hospitals. And they were using local data, publicly available data that was generated in real time to get the most up-to-date perspective on what was happening in each location during the pandemic. So this solution allowed hospitals to address two issues. The first one is, are we going to have enough PPE to equip staff given the increased consumption that we're seeing, given the shortages that are out there? So, for example, generating forecasts for gloves and gowns and surgical masks and face shield and COVID tests. And then secondly, how can we efficiently discharge patients to post-acute care given the capacity constraints that we're facing? Um, and uh, thousands of hospitals use the Cuventus solution, and it's been enormously helpful in really allowing hospitals to understand the capacity constraints and really better plan for their, for their PPE purchases. Um, and then one more example from Go Spot Check. Uh, this is the, the third one that I've mentioned. Uh, this one is about consumer packaged goods, and, and it's one that I find particularly very interesting. Uh, CPG brands, as you can imagine, really care about product placement and their presence on the store shelf. They want to know exactly where their products are positioned, how many of their products are present, how are they doing against their competitors in every single store, right? Uh, it's a very tedious process to collect all this data by hand. So what GoSpotCheck did is they created a, a new, new features, a new app uh, that allows you to simply take images uh, through the app uh, you have a field rep that uh, has the app, and they take a picture of a refrigerator or, or a cooler. And within seconds, really seconds, the app returns the analysis. So a user doesn't have to stand there with the clipboard and manually have to count how many bottles of Pepsi or Bud Light or, or whatever. So so the the um, just through the picture, they can know what is the share of space by brand, by brand family, by category, by supplier. Uh, not just that, but also what else is on the shelves? What position is it in? What shelf is it on? It's really granular level data uh, that delivers extremely high value analysis, and it's a real game changer for CPG companies. And what's interesting about this is the sheer amount of insights that you can generate just from one image in a matter of seconds. It, it's really impressive, especially when you consider that the field rep is not just visiting one store. They're visiting 20 stores per day, taking 10 to 15 images in each store. Uh, and it's not just one rep, it's tens of thousands of reps doing this. We're talking about a massive data set, incredibly powerful insights that come from combining image recognition with mobile technology with world-class analytics. My last example is a company called Use Mobility. Uh, Use Mobility is a company that places AI-powered digital billboards on commercial vehicles and, and public transportation. So if you're driving you know, or walking down, down, down the street and you see a, a van go by with the digital ad, that's what Use Mobility does. It's a, it's a great idea, not just because of the advertising, but also because it gives the owners of those vehicles the ability to generate new revenue. Uh, they see uh, just a really big opportunity to reach an enormous audience. So here in the United States, over 300 million potential customers that are not being reached when we leave our front door and we're not watching TV or, 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 or receiving ads in, in more traditional ways. Um, this, it, this company is really interesting because they launched their business in the U.S. during the pandemic. And, and what's innovative about their offering is that their ads respond automatically to real-time geo data and real-time weather data collected by IoT sensors on the vehicles. And, and these sensors tell the billboard everything from what the, what the weather is like to the type of neighborhood. So uh, you'll see an, an ad for ice cream uh, on a hot day, or if it's raining, you'll see an ad for an umbrella. 
uh, or let's say that the vehicle is driving through um, you know, Fifth Avenue in Manhattan, uh, the ads would instantly shift to luxury consumer goods. Um, and, uh, and, and so, so one example of a company is a company that, that sells mobile airbags for bikers. It's a, a customer of use. Uh, they had a bike with this large digital screen go through bicycle lanes in Berlin, uh, and they were delivering the right ad to the right audience at the right time. They saw their sales increase 38% after this ad. There's a lot of opportunity here. They plan to take these insights now, the insights that they're generating from the IoT sensors and monetize them, uh, building a new product they can take to market. So let's wrap up now uh, with a summary of what we've covered and a few takeaways. Um, the, the pandemic was a real shock to the system that acceler accelerated the migration for many companies to digital first experiences. And, and as data leaders, you are positioned probably better than anybody else in your organization to help your company prepare for this new digital reality. The, the stories that we looked at today show us that investments in data and modern cloud technologies are really necessary to be able to adapt very quickly. They're gonna put you in a position to be ready to react immediately to that next disruption whenever it happens. Uh, they also show us that reports and dashboards are just the beginning and, and that data is no longer just something that you analyze. You can use data as, as, your, as the fuel to trigger data-driven workflows uh, and to power digital experiences like intelligent bots and automated alerts and notifications or digital bill, uh, billboards. And, and they show us that it's imperative for organizations to think beyond business intelligence, uh, embedded analytics, artificial intelligence, image recognition, IoT, all these powerful capabilities are going to enable you to bring very compelling digital experiences to market. So, so let's hope that the light at the end of the tunnel continues to get brighter uh, and, and that we continue seeing these very encouraging signs of a recovery uh, and that there's a very prosperous era awaiting us on the other side. Um, I wish you all good health and success. Thank you so much for your time, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the event.